What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So over the next six or seven months, Nintendo has quite a few games planned for release. In fact, it looks like they have at least one exclusive planned for every single month going forward until January 2022. So they decided, hey, let's put a nice chart to kind of showcase this a bit better. And it actually led to many more questions being asked because one title was left off of that list. And we're gonna go over that one here today. Also, we're gonna be talking about Halo Infinite as Phil Spencer did appear on a podcast and talked talked about the release date and timing for this game. And we're also gonna be going over a pretty big sale happening right now on the PlayStation Store, seeing some good games, get some pretty solid discounts. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and hit the little notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads that go up here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with Xbox Game Pass as several new games were announced to be heading to the service starting today. And we'll head over here to news.xbox.com and we can start with the little graphic they did put up and we'll go over all the different games starting today with Worms Rumble, Cloud Console, and PC, Iron Harvest, that's on PC, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered, Console and PC, that's through EA Play, Proteus on PC, moving up to July 1st, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, that's heading to the cloud, Bug Fables, that's Cloud, Console, and PC, and I fully recommend Bug Fables. I think that is an awesome game to head to Game Pass for people who maybe overlooked it or just missed it. It is certainly one you want to check out if you're a fan of like the older Paper Mario style games, kind of that turn-based RPG. So make sure you check that one out July 1st. Uh, Gang Beast, that's Cloud, Console, and PC. Immortal Realms, Vampire Wars, Cloud, Console, and PC. Then we have Limbo on Cloud, Console, and PC. Now, one thing with these subscription services is that as new games come in, at times, uh, quite a few games will go out, and that is happening here starting June 30th with uh, quite a hefty list, actually, that will be leaving the service with Battle Chasers Night War, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Missed Over, Monster Hunter World, Out of the Park Baseball 21, Outer Wilds, Soul Calibur 6, and The Messenger. So yeah, several games actually leaving, but some of the ones coming in are pretty good, and I fully recommend checking out Bug Fables as soon as it lands July 1st. Also, Scarlet Nexus does come out tomorrow, and we do have a demo, so if you're curious about the game, I would certainly check that one out. And I liked what I played there with the demo, so I, I am interested around what the full game is gonna be like, but we did get full reviews dropping yesterday, and we can head over here to Metacritic, where it's currently sitting at an 80. If we look at the review split, 35 positive and six mixed. And you know what? As I was reading through some of these reviews and the summaries, I noticed a, a kind of a common theme here. For the most part, all the different reviews pointed out that the gameplay itself, the combat, is really fun and, and has a lot to it, really. I mean, it has some complexities that were frustrating at times to some of the reviewers, but for the most part, that was one of the highlights that they pointed to, and that is really good to hear. Also, they seem to really enjoy what they saw with kind of the lore of the game that's 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 being painted here by Bandai. I believe there all, there's also like an anime for this that's coming out. I think it was on Netflix, but... What they're saying here is the story itself that's kind of sectioned off to this game unfortunately left them wanting more, but here's hoping, I guess, that it sells well enough and that Bandai can continue the story here because for the most part, it looks like a pretty solid overall action RPG, and I'll be checking that one out starting uh, tomorrow. Oh, and speaking of RPGs, Neo The World Ends With You is out at the end of next month, and it looks like fans of the series will get to try this new game uh, actually a little earlier than they maybe we're thinking as it looks like Square may have accidentally leaked out that a demo is dropping any time now. In fact, by the time you're seeing this video, it may have already been announced, but we can see this screen capture here of the tweet that has now been deleted, where they have a trailer playing, this was from Square Enix, talking about Neo The World Ends With You, and look at that, July 27th, 2021, and play the demo now. They have PS4 and Nintendo Switch logos right below that, and that's obviously exciting stuff for fans of the series who are like, oh, it's just one more month. At least we could see a demo get dropped dropped here and Square's been doing this a lot. In fact, for a lot of their demos, it's like if it's this close to release, you might even see something carry over to the full game. So make sure you keep an eye out, I guess, today because as soon as this trailer drops with the text like that at the end, the demo should be out and you should be able to play it on your PlayStation or your Switch. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the rest of 2021 for Nintendo and then into 2022. After E3, I mean, they just had a barrage of games that 
they're coming out here pretty soon. Like they were trying to set up certainly the rest of 2021. And in fact, we can see this tweet here from Nintendo where they said, here's a quick look at just some of the games coming to Nintendo Switch in 2021 and beyond. Which ones are you going to play? And I did a video uh, over the weekend going over one of these kind of charts that was put up on Reddit, but this is an official one that is put out by Nintendo. I mean, as you start to look through this, you do realize just how many games are upcoming for the Switch. And a lot of them, as I said, they, they have several exclusives that are heading to the platform and one every single month, starting with, we have Mario Golf coming out tomorrow. Then we have The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Then we go into uh, No More Heroes. We have Metroid Dread, WarioWare, Mario Party, Pokemon, Shimigami Tensei 5, Advanced Wars. And then we get into 2022 and Pokemon Ar Arceus starts that whole year off. So a lot is happening here. However, as you see all of those games, and we go down further and further, we get to the 2022 section, and uh, there were a lot of people pointing out that Breath of the Wild 2, or the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, is missing. In fact, 2022 shows Splatoon 3, Pokemon Arceus, Triangle Strategy, and Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. No Legend of Zelda. I mean, they also don't technically have, like, Bayonetta 3 or any of that, but who knows what happened to that game. At least we've seen... Breath of the Wild sequel a, a few times here with the latest being at E3 very recently. But if you think about it, there are a few reasons why it's not on this chart, but that still led to several articles and headlines reading that has a glaring omission and obviously that being the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. See, I keep saying the sequel because there's no logo and there's no official title and they're not going to do a logo reveal here on Twitter from a, uh, the social media manager who's running it and decided to open up Photoshop the other day and kind of outline this. I mean, it's a good looking graphic and chart here to kind of help you visualize just the number of games that are coming out. And I really like the one that was uh, put out on Reddit. This one's great too, but you, you, there's really no way they can necessarily visualize it unless they seriously just go take the Legend of Zelda uh, logo and just put a two next to it. And that could cause a lot of confusion and all this because it's like a working title, but we have a two on the, on the end. Is this the Breath of the Wild logo that's being revealed? The way I'd look at it is they've said they are aiming for 2022. That does mean, yes, it can fall to 2023. So they're not necessarily ready to even commit to 2022 as it is, let alone put it on a nice little chart here they made for Twitter. That said, I do believe they're going to try to get Breath of the Wild 2 out for holiday 2022. It just comes down to them obviously aiming for a very ambitious sequel. Uh, like when they started really going over what they were going to do, incorporating the sky, I think a lot of people realized, wow, this looks like a pretty serious game they're building up and it's not necessarily going to feel like DLC, which is something that did come up in conversation quite a bit as they would be looking to do a full-on sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So for now, check out the chart that they put up. I'll link to it down below. Go over all the different games coming out and look towards 2022 for hopefully Breath of the Wild 2, maybe a new Mario Kart, and fingers crossed for Bayonetta 3. Next up, let's talk about Halo Infinite and Phil Spencer. Now, the one knock I had on the entire Xbox showcase, the presentation, is that they did not have a solid date for Halo Infinite, despite it being delayed from the Xbox Series X launch. You figured by now they would be ready to go, they'd have a date kind of ironed out here, and it'd be full speed ahead towards the holiday season. Instead, we have Holiday. 2021 just kind of set up next to the Halo Infinite logo when they did that reveal. Well, it turns out they at least have an idea as to when it is coming out, and I have a pretty good uh, idea as to why they're not putting a date out there just yet. We can head over here. This was a quotation that was transcribed by IGN from the podcast Dropped Frames. This was from Phil Spencer saying, we know kind of our range in the three to four week range. We don't have yet the exact date. There's some other things with some other game timing that we're trying to look at will have better clarity over the summer, but this isn't a month's thing. It, this is just down to a few weeks. Instead of picking this date and having to move it by a week, which at this point would, it would feel like a fail, we don't want to do that. Let's wait until we're really solid on what the date is. Spencer continued, but the team is very committed to holiday. We feel good about that. And you know what? I, I do believe at least part of Halo Infinite is coming out this holiday. I say part because I still believe if they want to, they could just drop the multiplayer as a beta and like, oh, the campaign will come out when the full game launches. Like, 
next year. I'd like to think that the campaign and the multiplayer, it's just going to be ready to go all at the same time. We'll just have this massive drop of, of Halo throughout holiday 2021. That'd be awesome, and I hope the game ends up being very, very good. But let's face it, they're waiting to see when Call of Duty comes out. I mean, we already know Battlefield's coming out towards the end of October. Let's say Call of Duty comes out mid to early November. I don't think Microsoft wants to drop Halo, like, right around that. Because, to me, that kind of looks like what we saw with Titanfall 2. Not that, like, Halo is going to fail because it's around these. In fact, I kind of think Microsoft can technically drop Halo whenever they want and it would be fine. The multiplayer is free to play. Like, th that right away. You know, you're looking at that, you're saying, well, it's not even a $70 game. You can just play it. You don't need Xbox Live Gold. But I'm sure Microsoft is looking at Call of Duty and they're looking at Battlefield as sources of revenue for them. I mean, they're going to make money when Battlefield comes out and they're going to make money when Call of Duty comes out. So they also don't want to try to overshadow or pull any audience away from that in like the same release week with their own free-to-play multiplayer that could be launching. Remember their platform holder? They get 30% digitally of all of those Call of Duties to sell and all of those Battlefields to sell. So for them, let's try to figure out where Halo can release so it doesn't interfere with those two releases. And really, as long as it's like two weeks or so away from any of that, they would be fine. I think it would be a good idea to try to launch it in the beginning of October, just to kind of get that out there. But who's to say that Call of Duty doesn't announce that they are in the beginning uh, of October. And if Microsoft had announced that Halo Infinite is there at E3, well, now they're kind of stuck. And as Phil says, they don't want to move that date around because it looked pretty bad if they had to still move dates after already having delayed it nearly a year from the Xbox Series X launch. So here's hoping Call of Duty drops their release date, and then we can find out when Halo Infinite comes out. Next up, let's talk about a pretty big upgrade that appears to be happening right now for xCloud, or Microsoft's game streaming platform. We can head over here to Twitter, where we see from Tom Warren saying, it looks like xCloud just got the Xbox Series X hardware upgrade for certain games. Yakuza, Rainbow Six Siege, and others are showing 120 FPS or graphics options and are loading faster. Now those, of course, are features that are tied to the Xbox Series X hardware, and in some cases, the Series S with the faster loading times. But it does look like as people started to test different games, they found different graphical options that pointed to Xbox Series X server blades being used as like Reset Era started to kind of just compile a list here and there are quite a few games right now that are, I guess, using next-gen hardware in these data centers. Gears 5, Sea of Thieves, Wolfenstein, Youngblood, Elder Scrolls Online, even MLB The Show, uh, Dirt 5. And this is obviously great to see this happening. They haven't made any kind of announcement, that being Microsoft, other than... Yeah, yeah, we're working to get these server blades set up, these Series X blades set up in our data centers, but they were just nearing that launch. They didn't officially say, yes, they're ready to go and up and running, and that's because I'm sure they are slowly changing them out as they go. And in fact, that could be one thing that is causing shortages on Microsoft side because not only are they trying to stock all these store shelves with Series X and Series S systems, but then they're also trying to fill up their data centers with these over time. It appears that they are trying to do this, I guess, over the course of the coming months. So hey, maybe you'll be fortunate. You'll be uh, you'll jump on xCloud on your phone and you get all of the cool graphical options. But some people were saying they were still kind of logging in and being on like old Xbox One hardware. So it's kind of a flip of a coin right now when you decide to use xCloud. But as we go along, I'm sure it will become more commonplace to get the Series X blades. And that means, I guess, we could get to the point where Microsoft does officially reveal and announce that they will have 4K streaming, which would put them, I guess, right there with Stadia, which Stadia still has like the best overall streaming experience. They just never were able to figure out the ecosystem and the business side of things when it comes to uh, a reason for you to play on that streaming service with something like what Luna has or what uh, we see Microsoft have with a subscription service where you just kind of sign in and pick from a bunch of games and just kind of go and play rather than have to buy each game individually, you know, 10, 20, 40, or even $60 in some cases. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the sale going on right now on the PlayStation Store. This is Sony's 
mid-year sale. It's going to run until July 8th. So you have about two weeks or so to kind of go through all the different games and see if there's anything you wanted to pick out. I did go ahead and kind of highlight a few games here that we can go over, starting with Crash 4. That's at $36. Persona 5 Royal at $27. Need for Speed Heat at $18. The Outer Worlds at $20. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin at $28. Trails of Cold Steel 3 at $30. Trails of Cold Steel 4 at $42. Ease 8 at $20. We have the Assassin's Creed Legendary Collection, seeing a pretty steep discount overall down to $60. That includes Assassin's Creed 4. Uh, Rogue, we have Unity, Syndicate, Origins, and Odyssey. So if you've been interested in the Assassin's Creed games and trying to figure out what you can pick up and go through, I mean, this will certainly fill out your backlog there. And then we have Fast and the Furious Crossroads down to $16. I mean, this, this game closed out the Video Game Awards one year, so that should tell you all you need to know about the quality around this game. Uh, looking through the list here, I was a big fan of Need for Speed Heat. I think that's great at $18. And Ease 8 at $20, I mean, that's an absolute steal for a game like that. But certainly, tons of games on sale. And let some people know down in the comments some suggestions for ones they should check out. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, Scarlet Nexus is out this Friday. Are you picking it up? 8% said, yes, I'm getting it as soon as possible. 29% said, I'll get it eventually, maybe after it goes on sale. And then 63% said, no, not interested in it. And I think after E3, with all the games that got shown and several of them coming out like this holiday, especially several from Nintendo, and then Sony's lineup, I think is going to be shown here in the coming weeks. I do feel like a lot of people looked at Scarlet Nexus and said, yeah, I can wait on this one. I mean, there's a demo at least, so I would recommend checking it out. I did see some people in the comments of the poll say that they hadn't even really been paying attention to Scarlet Nexus. I don't know if the advertising has been great for it, but Microsoft does keep putting it on like the Xbox store whenever I'm there. So I, I, I don't know there, but I do believe this is a game that could be overlooked for quite some time, mostly because it is starting to get crowded here in 2021 as we head towards the holidays. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Seb High Def saying, interesting used in Spawn Wave titles so far, total 68. Spawn Wave Channel 61, Spawn Wave Plus Channel 7. Hey, that, that's not bad. I mean, I think with, between both channels, it's almost 3,000 videos. So it's like 2% or so. In the world of YouTube, that's pretty good. But I do hear you guys down in the comments. So I went ahead and took a look at some other words I could kind of substitute in for interesting. Let's see. We have absorbing, engrossing. I, I do like spellbinding. That, that's a good one there. Engaging, thought-provoking. I mean, there's a hyphen in there. And then unputdownable. I did not know you could even use unput downable in place of interesting, but Google wouldn't lie to me. So maybe I will look through this and see if there are any words that I could use instead of interesting. For the most part, they all seem acceptable, except for stimulating. That one might get me in trouble. Unless I move over to Twitch. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's Nintendo's lineup for the rest of 2021 and starting off with 2022. What do you think about that graph they put out with all of those releases coming out? And then also what about Breath of the Wild 2? Do you think it is coming out in 2022? And then Halo Infinite with this holiday release window. Give me your best guess as to when you think it's gonna come out. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.